cloud. All right, so welcome everyone. Thanks again for joining for people who um, not the first time with us and uh, welcome everyone who is, is, it is the first time. So today we're gonna be talking about uh, AI assisted root cause analysis. And uh, I wanna emphasize less on AI assisted, but yet we, we're gonna dive into that definitely. And, and more about the tools and the mechanics that uh, the uh, Pre's platform supports for root cause analysis and potentially uh, finding the solutions for root causes uh, and, and anything around this process. So, and I'll start sharing the screen and we'll dive into that right away. Do you see my screen all right? Yes. Great, perfect. So first of all, uh, I wanna say that uh, uh, we have basically all the tools necessary to perform root cause analysis. Uh, and and to search for solutions as well. But again, we're uh, today we're focusing on root cause analysis. We're going to take one of our uh, previous themes that we discussed in in uh, several different occasions, because again, we want to focus on on the mechanics and the process of uh, the root cause and the tools that we're using and how we use them. And of course, we'll touch on AI. Now, uh, just a reminder, we uh, in, in, in Prees, everything is organized in, in the projects. Uh, any problem that we're kind of working on, it's organized in the projects. And recently we also added something that allows people to use uh, tools separately without creating, without the need to create a project. And you can use the tools in isolation. Uh, and, and I think that that makes the, a little bit better entry uh, in, into the system a little bit easier. So please use that uh, as you as you wish. Uh, and that also allows to convert the, uh, the these standalone tools into a project as well. So we already uh, created this, uh, already started the project, uh, the project here. And today we're gonna be talking about Wafer breakage. I'm sure some people already uh, seen that in the uh, seen this this problem that we analyzed in the past. But we're talking about the the uh, um, uh, microchip manufacturing, uh, where as part of one of the processes that that uh, uh, this manufacturing has, the wafer every now and then breaks as a result of the flash heating. Now. Every time when we start the project and we start working on the problem, first of all, we need to understand what the problem is about, what the system is about, what the problem space. We need to understand everything that we know about this in one place. Uh, and, and this is where we do that, in the project overview. Now, since we're gonna be touching on AI, AI uh, needs a little bit more information and it's very important. Uh, to be able to work. And one of the things that, that uh, we support is basically identifying which industry we're working in, which areas of responsibility or department, and I'll show you that in a second, what's the goal the goal of the, of the project itself. Now, the industry, we have a list of industries, it's a pretty long list, but potentially not a, a fully comprehensive list. Uh, that's why, one of the AI helps that we have in here is uh, basically we can ask we can ask the machine to help us to select what industry we're in, and many times people uh, people including ourselves uh, kind of struggling to select the industry, and in this case you can literally just say you know we are uh, manufacturing uh, micro uh, microchip microchips. Right, and then we we just ask for for a list of potential matching, right? So it will give a list of matching based on based on the input that we give it, and let's just go with the semiconductors manufacturing. Uh, in <clears throat> in here we want to talk about engineering, and the cor current goal. Uh, let's go with um, with process improvement, right? So that's kind of the very basis of the of the project and and uh, 
and again, here we 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 could have done just a root cause analysis and the sample root cause. Uh, let's just go with a process improvement for now. Now, the background, and that's the next most important thing, or, or I would say probably the most important thing in any problem solving project, is where we're documenting the current problem space, what's going on right now, right? And as I mentioned before, we're talking about the wafer that breaks in the process. Um, and we could just write um, the wafer is breaking during uh, the flash heating, right? And based on our experience, majority of people will just stop it right here and move on, right? Which is uh, not very helpful. And one of the things that, again, in, that we're getting help with AI is basically have a feedback on that amount of information that we provided. Is it enough? Is it what what we expect? Is it enough to even start working with? And we're giving some level of uh, some grade, if you will, of completeness. And, and that means, did we describe the problem? Did we describe the space that we are in? Uh, is it... Um, uh, did we des describe what's the cost of it and so on so so forth, right? So, of course, that's not enough. All all we did is get got the ten percent, and we can continue refining that and and, and adding more information, add a little bit more stats as we need to uh, to shorten the process. Uh, we prepared uh, already quite a lot of information, and I'll just paste it from uh, in here and. You know, the system supports images. Uh, we describing how it happens, where it happens. Uh, of course, as much details as we can as a human beings that working on that, uh, on that problem, this is where it, it's supposed to live. And now if we, you know, reevaluate this, we get a, a completely different picture all of a sudden. We can add more information and refine it more. To get to the 100%, like with any documentation out there, is very, very hard, and that's expected, and that's OK. OK, so the next thing, of course, uh, we need to define the problem statement. And and again, oh, in I, here I, we I'm have sorry. AI. I'm sorry, yeah, Alex. Uh, maybe you were explain a little bit the uh, system and, and situation. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, my apologies. Right, so in, in, in this process, we uh, the wafer is getting loaded in the chamber uh, to uh, uh, start a reaction. The chamber is under 400 degrees Celsius initially, and then there is a lamp at the top. Uh, when the chamber is loaded and, and everything is closed, there is a lamp at the top that heats the wafer for a thousand degrees uh, for a second uh, in order to start the reaction but but it has to be short so so the 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 um, particles don't uh, don't start the diffusion process uh, and what happens during these uh, flash heatings during these processes often not always but often the the wafer basically breaks and it looks something like that in different forms and shapes and pretty much just explodes. Alex, um, maybe, maybe I would like to, to add something uh, in the... Sure. Yeah, please show the picture uh, of the chamber. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, you see the wafer is located on the uh, pedestal made from uh, quartz uh, on the uh, bumps. And there are uh, centering uh, pins. Alex, can you show centering pins? Mm -hmm. uh, that allows to, to, to keep uh, the wafer in the center. And there is a continuous heating from the bottom. It's about 400 degrees centigrade. And we have flush furnace above, flush heating above, which uh, increases temperature very, very fast within, within one second. We can get we can get uh, to uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, one thousand degree centigrade, uh, and uh, uh, 
you know, it could be wafer, it could be you know, it could be plate, it could it doesn't matter. It's you should not be a big professional in uh, microchip manufacturing. But you know, in any time you produce uh, microchips, you will need this operation in order to uh, initiate. Uh, 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 embedded atom, atoms and ions and uh, avoid diffusion. So, sorry, I No, perfect. Thank you so much. Perfect. Uh, so, once we have all the information, and by the way, there's no, uh, nothing wrong with going back to this page and adding more information. It's absolutely normal. The thought process is something that evolves in our minds, and it's it's more than you know, it's more than than welcome to go back and add more. Or if we forgot something, it's it's absolutely okay to do that. Now, the next steps once once we have the uh, the the background. Apologies, the background in place, and we have some sort of evaluation of what it is, of how how well we did in in this. Uh, we can start with the process of defining the problem, basically the problem statement. Now, same here, AI uh, gives us uh, can give us a little bit of help. In in here, the idea with AI. Overall, it's not to rely on that to give us the exact answer, but to get us hints. And it's very important to, yes, read what AI, if we decide to use AI and the machine, uh, it's very important to read what it proposes, but we basically need to argue with it. Same as we arguing with our coworkers. You know, we have a discussion about the problem. We have a discussion about the current situation in this particular case. And, that, and that's okay. And so it's actually welcome uh, to to have this argument rather you know with a machine or another person, it's the same thing. This is what encourages us to think deeper and analyze deeper, and even you know understand. Even if we in the in the right direction, we can ask for more hints as much as we want, and we'll get a little bit more details and so on and so forth. Uh, we can use this as is, as I mentioned. Uh, you know, this project focuses on analysis of frequent uh, silicon wafer breakage occurring during the flash heating. And it's the description based on what we wrote in the overview in a very summarized way of what's going on right now. Uh, again, I'll, I'll use what we prepared previously in here. It's pretty much the same thing in a little bit different form. Then we're moving to the next step. And the next step is, why is it bad? Basically, what's the disadvantages, disadvantages of that? And any problem, when we're talking about any problem, there is something that we see, feel, or hear. Uh, that's a symptom. And basically, these current situations, that is the symptoms, right? The disadvantages is what we potentially, how we, it's potentially how we, uh, getting closer to the problem description. Why is it bad? You know, if the wafer breaks, but nobody needs this wafer, who cares, right? It's not a problem for, uh, for anybody. Uh, but in this case, also, the AI can give us a little bit of hint using all the information that we provided. Uh, you know, uh, uncertainty in root cause, uh, root, root cause identification, excuse me. Uh, the questionable validity of traditional terminal shock, and so on. We can we can use one of these. We can ask for it again if we want. Um, excuse me. Uh, uh, but it, but in this case as well, we prepared something of our own after arguing with the machine, and this is what we came up with. Excuse me. Uh, frequent silicon breakage can lead to increased production costs due to material waste and rework, uh, and so on. Now, the ultimate goal, uh, or something that is in a trees world called uh, ideal final result, result, 
what is it we basically want to achieve in ideal situation? And obviously we don't want the wafer to be breaking during the process, right? Now, the next thing, great, we don't want it to break, but what's, uh, what's preventing us from, from that not to be breaking, right? Basically, in other words, what's the gaps that we're facing in order to get to that ideal final result? Uh, our preparation, we don't have reliable physical model allowing us to execute the wafer, uh, exclude the wafer breaches. Basically, we, first of all, we don't even understand why is it breaking in order to be able to prevent that. Right. On purpose, the AI here is not included because AI doesn't know what is it we want, what is it we need, all right? And it doesn't know enough of our context. That's why it is very important for a human being to have the input. And the last thing in this process, while we define the problem statement or how we call it here, problem to solve is uh, what is it we're trying to solve out of all of this information and potentially in these uh, in these disadvantages, it could be more than one problem that we're facing or more than one um, disadvantage that we're trying to, to resolve. We need to choose one in order to be able to address, in order to be able to work on that. And here, same concept, AI can uh, allow some hints uh, uh, suggest some, some hints that will make us think a little bit more. Uh, and we can either choose what we want or, uh, or use our own, uh, our own head for it. In here, we very much simplified it into the statement. The mechanism of wafer breakage is not known so far because this is what we want to address right now. We want to understand why is it breaking, want to understand the root causes that we care about. I'll pause here for a moment if anybody has any questions. All right, let's move on. So now we're getting to the creative, to the level of creative tools. And creative tools, at this point, we have 11 of them. Uh, some of them related to uh, root cause analysis, like the cause and effect chain and five whys, and we will use both of them today. Uh, nice. Some you more. Can, uh, I'm sorry, you can you can click uh, get suggestion. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get oh, there. I'm sorry, I'll I'm get sorry. there. Uh, and and some of them more uh, for other processes like generating uh, uh, in, innovative solutions and even the brainstorming with our own twist. Uh, building a functional model that some people are already aware of. But we can ask the system, based on, again, the information that we provided, what can it suggest? Which tools should we use, right? And right away, it basically said, you know, five whys would be one of them because we want to try to find the root cause or cause and effect chain is one of them. We want to find the root cause. Functional model is also very, very helpful to, to try to understand the system in more details in order to be able to uh, find root cause. And I want to start with cause and effect chain. Now, like any other tools in, in, in uh, uh, Priest platform, uh, every tool has a very similar structure because every tool is, you were using a tool in order to analyze something in order to do something, achieve a specific target, a very small subset of, of the problem that we're working on. And this is why we have a subject that we're working on. And that's basically that little description that we, we want to work on using this tool. And in here, uh, similar to overview, we're putting some information. So it, it is in one place. It is in front of our eyes uh, to uh, work on it easier. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the once we have that and it's not far away, so we don't need to jump. Let's start building the actual cause and effect chain itself. And our initial, uh, uh, how do you call it, um, uh, symptom that we're observing is what we just described: the flash heating results in breakage of a silicon wafer. 
right? And in cause and effect chain, we we want to ask the question of why and, and try to understand all the possible and impossible reasons of why is that potentially happening and, and, uh, and dig deeper every, every step we go, every level we go. Same here. We have a little bit of a AI help. Again, don't rely on that. Don't just uh, say this is the, the golden truth. It is not. It is something, it's a suggestion, but it's something built for us to argue with. And I will probably repeat that many times we can. So in this case, the machine proposes uh, incorrect temperature control during the flash heating process uh, or a presence of uh, impurities in the silicon material. That's a new one, by the way, we didn't see this one yet. Uh, in other words, cooling process, uh, flashing heating. So basically it's some sort of a, a, a thermal stress potentially. Let's take this one. Uh, what's other options that we have? Uh, improper handling of during, uh, handling during the manufacturing process, inadequate cooling mechanism. Again, we already seen that. Uh, variations in heating parameters leading to uneven stress distribution. So that's a that's a, a thermal stress. But this guy sounds like a more more a, a physical stress, right? So let's let's take that and uh, massage it a little bit just for our convenience. Um, right, and good. What's next? Uh, so let, let's change that as a, oops, thermal stress. And that's gonna be physical stress. Um, what's next? So why thermal stress is happening? Let's see. Rapid temperature changes in manufacturing process, inadequate cooling, which we see in, in different variations, improper handling of uh, or storage of sensitive materials. I don't know how is that related, but okay, that's fine. Uh, what we, what can we do here? Uh, usually stress is happening. You know what? I don't even know why thermal stress is happening, but we have another help in here and we can say, listen, we don't know. We could potentially go and look for in, uh, in the internet and ask, try to find why thermal stress is happening in material, but we have all the help that we need in here and we can ask the machine and say, why? Why can a thermal stress uh, take place in the material? All right? Oops, thermal. And we'll get an answer, and we can continue that conversation as much as we want. The key here is that if you search somewhere outside, it's not necessarily a problem, but all we search and all we're doing in the platform is basically saved within the context of the project. You look at this project a year from now, five years from now, it's all here. The entire thought process and how did you get here, it's all, it's all saved forever. And then here, the uh, thermal stress can occur in a material due to temperature variation within material. So temperature variation within material it leads me to think about uh, temperature gradient, right? Tem temperature gradient. Oops, I can't spell today. Uh, why why that can happen? I'll I'll make it a little bit bigger.
a variation in heating and cooling rates, uh, inadequate insulation, inconsistent environment conditions. That's interesting. Um, I, I want to take something else though. I want to take that the because we have the gradient, it's what that means is because we have different difference in in temperature uh, throughout the wafer, right? That's basically what the gradient means. You have different temperatures in different places on on the uh, in of the wafer. All right. Um, let's go to another to the other uh, path. So now we're talking about the physical stress, right? And ask the same question: Why is that happening? Right? It could be because of the hit. Uh, you know, when we're handling it, it could be because uh, the wafer hits something when during the process. It could be anything. So some sort of mechanical hit, mechanical hit during the heating process, right? Uh, <clears throat> oops. What else? Why, why is that? If it hits, then probably it moves. Uh, let's see what the eye says. Improper handling of the equipment. Okay, potentially lack of uh, uh, proper training of the operator. Well, could be, but we that probably additional path to investigate, but potentially mal malfunction of the heating equipment. Mm. That's been functioning properly for any other wafers. So I would love to ignore that. You wanted to add something on the top? Yeah, I would say it's a uh, uh, mechanical stress uh, gradient. Mechanical stress. mechanical stress gradient. Gradient. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, stress gradient. Okay. Uh, let's dig deeper. It means uh, some mechanical heat. What is that? Uh... So variation in temperature. So for some reason, I went back to the temperature, but okay. Inadequate material handling uh, practices, improper equipment calibration. I think the second two, well, the second, the second is great. This is okay. actually, yeah, it, it might, might be inadequate. Oh. Yeah, it, 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 improper it handling. That. Okay. Improper handling during the transportation. So, yes, it is improper handling, but probably not during the transportation, but during the process, mm -hmm. uh, during the uh, flash heating, right? Uh, or we can rename it a little bit differently and say it's, uh, yeah, that's fine. Let's leave it at that. Okay. Excuse me. Now, one of the things that while we're working on these models, we can already start coming up with some interesting ideas and interesting notes that we want to put aside. We can do all of that in here. We don't need pen and paper. We don't need a whiteboard. We don't need any of that. We can just start putting, first of all, we have a little bit of color coding to make it a little bit more convenient and mark things as, as, we, as we wish. And uh, I want to mark this as potentially promising direction. The wafer is handling with an equipment may cause the breakage, right? So our assumption after looking into that is that the, the wafer is, is moving and hitting the centering pins, and maybe that, that's what happens, right? But from a mechanics perspective for the tool, we have all the tools for the documentation, for asking the question to see uh, potentially the entire chain of uh, events and causes that, that, that we can dig into. 
And once we have that, we may or may not have a conclusion that we want to put in place, which is also documented as part of this entire process. Just a moment, Alex. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. go, go back to the, to the diagram. We have to uh, mm -hmm. uh, think about this uh, and another branch, which is a thermal, a thermal gradient. Uh, if, you, if you go to the, to the end, thermal mm -hmm. difference. Uh, let's have a look on the, uh, on the uh, picture subject. You mean here? Yeah, and you see the lamp is much more than the vector. And let's say it's very difficult in such situation to hit a vector uh, to create temperature gradient. Therefore, we stop working on this uh, branch, on the branch of thermal uh, uh, stress and start working on the mechanical stress. Because uh, right. so it's uh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Because uh, a mechanical stress may be achieved uh, much easier due to uh, uh, movement of the vector, due to movement of the vector. Okay. And, and again, something that I wanted to mention. Something that I wanted to mention is uh, usually. In most cases, people not working on these things alone. And it's something that is a team effort uh, that requires uh, to solve complex problems. And this is where you know, the team basically evaluates and says, well, what's the chance that it's here or what's the chance that it's there? And, and explore the, the, the most, uh, uh, how, do I, how do I call it? The most potential path for, for the, the actual root cause. Right, and it, it's it's part of the process and part of the documenting this process. But here as well, we can just say uh, most likely not a cause uh, because of the structure of the heater uh, heating lamp. Oops, heating lamp. Uh, and its sizes, right? And again, we documented it here. It's staying here forever for us to read later. Now, what's next? Next, we have this tree, great, <laughs> now what? Uh, we wanna start diving more into the solution part. And the idea that we're proposing in here many times is saying, okay, you have many branches and sometimes you don't have two, you have 15, right? Very extreme situations, but it's possible. And the idea here, we, we want to explore, we want to explore the path that we think that is most likely to be helpful, right? And in this case, the other helpful tool that we want to, uh, we want to dive into is actually five watts. And that was another tool that the, the machines suggested us to use. And five wise, uh, traditionally it's been built in a way that we need to uh, ask if, uh, the question of why something happens five times. Uh, in, in our case, it's actually, officially it's called five plus wise because we're not forcing to stop anyone at five and we're not saying that five is the golden number that we need to get to. Uh, and uh, so that's first reason. And another reason, the root cause is not necessarily the fifth one, but the one that we decided to solve. Because any, uh, any cause that we're solving ultimately solves the problem. But let's dive into that. So again, we're starting with the very top. And we're saying uh, silicon wafer becomes broken uh, at flash heating, uh, which is a very fast heating heating by the flashlight from the top of the wafer. So back into the same picture as you remember. By the way, for some reason, we don't have a, 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 the system description here. Maybe we should add. Now we're asking the question why? And same concept, we can then get hints from, from AI. Improper handling of the silicon during the loading and unloading. So we already determined that we probably 
that's probably not the case because the when we're loading the wafer, it's all good. It, it, nothing happens to it. Incorrect temperature distribution. So that's not the path we want to go. Uh, we want to go with. We wanted to explore the physical stress, not the thermal presence of defects or uh, impurity in the silicon wafer. Mm, not so much, right? Let's try again. Uh, improper handling of set of wafer during loading and loading. We already seen that. Another, you know what? Let's ignore that. I don't agree with the machine in this case. And we'll just go with a wafer uh, got mechanical hit from center and beams. That's what we already talked about before and determined we want to explore that path. Let's move to the next question. Why is that happening? Right? Uh, well, if it hits, as you can imagine, uh, it means that it has to move during at some point in time in order to, to hit, right? So they, it happens because the wafer uh, moves. Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, why can that happen? Why can it move during the flash hit, uh, heating, right? Improper alignment, mm -hmm. that's what the centering is for. Defects, uh, 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 defective wafer handling robot arm, may or may not be. Uh, none of that, I think. Again, we can try it again. Or knowing knowing the system, knowing what happens. Imagine itself if we go back to the back to the overview, back to our nice picture. We have the heat, all of a sudden it heats up for uh, to a thousand degrees. You have a potentially temperature uh, uh, pressure differences from the top and the bottom. And there's a chance that the wafer simply gonna start flying at that, that uh, during that second, right? So going back to creative tools, uh, I wanna add here- uh, uh, Yes, pressure um, difference. Yeah, let's do pressure difference. Pressure difference during the flash heating, right? Uh, let's go to the next step. <clears throat> and I wanna ask AI again, right? Let's see, incorrect temperature settings loading to uneven heating, uh, leading to uneven heating. Mm, no, that's by design supposed to be high heat at the top and then 400 degrees at the, at the bottom. Clogged the dirty heating elements, probably not like we talked about as well. Uh, uh, malfunctioning pressure sensor causing an awkward reading. Well, as far as I'm aware, there is no pressure sensors there at all, right? Let's so, see, first again, one is uh, more or less because we have uneven heating. We heat it from the top and uh, not heat it from the bottom. Right, but it's not like an incorrect yeah, it's temperature not settings. Incorrect. This is how right. it is. Right. This is right. how it is by design, right? Right. right. So again, I'll, I'll just use, just for the sake of time, I'll just use what we prepared initially. Flash heating is performed on the top of the chamber uh, uh, above the very fair while the bottom part of the chamber is a lower temperature, right? And again, uh, like we talked about, it is by design. Uh, we don't necessarily want to change that. It's potentially going to be very expensive to change, but we could, right? You know, one of the ideas that we can have is uh, have equal heating from top and the bottom to the same uh, to the same temperature to the same uh, thousand degrees. So let's record that potentially as an idea, even, uh, you know, uh, restructure the, let's restructure the heating, heating to have the same, uh, same thousand degrees lamp at the bottom. Okay, again, 
there's no bad ideas, as they say. But I want to stop here and basically say that's the fundamental root, uh, root cause of a problem. And in our case, what we're trying to describe as a fundamental root cause of a problem, it's not necessarily the root cause that we want to address. Is the, is the one that we decided not to continue any further, right? Uh, or, we, or we potentially cannot affect, cannot change. We can change physics of the earth, for, for example, or we cannot change a material, uh, the, the chemistry of the material. Whatever the reason is, we can't or we don't want to uh, affect that step. That would be the, the fundamental root of the problem. And what happens at this point, we can start working ourselves backwards and say, okay, if we decide that this is a root cause that we want to address, remember when I when I said the root cause is not the last one in the chain, is the one that we decided to solve. And the concept is if we decide to, if we solve, if we break any one of these chains, we will solve the problem, right? Uh, the only concept that that uh, difference that the uh, FRP is something that we can, if we if we change it or so or or uh, solve the problem at this level, it will solve the problem in the future, not necessarily help us right now. Uh, where breaking these chains have a potential to uh, has a potential to solve the problem uh, right now that we have it right now. But what can be done? So this is where we start touching about generating solutions, right? We can get an AI help as well. So adjust the heating elements, ensuring uniform temperature. Yeah, so we just literally talked about that. Great, Let, let's record that. Uh, this is not going to the, to the idea manager, which the one that I recorded a second ago, but it, but it can if you decide to. Pressure differences. I don't know, probably it will give some, some let's see, uh, implement real-time monitor system to track the ingest pressure. Okay, conduct regular maintenances. Interesting. Uh, uh, invest in equipment upgrade modification and optimize pressure control during flash heating. Sure, but it could be like, do it in a vacuum, for example. Or at low pressure, at least low pressure. Or at, pressure. Or at a very low pressure. Reduce, reduce, reduce pressure. pressure. In, sure. There is no winds uh, in, uh, in in the uh, in the vacuum or in the low pressure chambers. Yeah. All right, but of course you can imagine if we reduce pressure, it makes the system more more expensive, more complex. So there's a problem with that as well. What can we do about moving away uh, away from movement? Well, we can probably fix it but somehow. Implement wafer. Mapping technology to track wafer movement. Well, that's not really helpful. Uh, utilize automated guide. Interesting. But yeah, I'll go with my own thing and let's say, uh, you know, fixate the wafer uh, during the process. Mechanical hit. I don't know, there is probably a bunch of different ideas that we can come up in here. Uh, implement more robust welfare handling system. Sure. Or maybe pad the centering team somehow or whatever, whatever else, right? But this is where we potentially get into the solution that we eventually, uh, eventually uh, implemented. And that's... Uh, um, sorry, I'll mute you. That uh, potentially you can change the form of the centering pins, right? So it's it's fine that it hits, but will it, but the fact that it causes the damage, it's a problem, right? Maybe we can uh, reshape, reshape. Excuse me, the Centering pins. To keep centering function and exclude uh, yeah. and exclude uh, to, to keep the function of centering the wafer, but uh, but reduce the uh, effect of the hit. 
Okay. Okay. Um, what's here? Usually, many times we're not really, really addressing the problem in here. Usually, it's a, uh, when we're addressing the problem at the actual uh, uh, symptom, it's not a solution, it's usually a patch. But just for the sake of it, I'll, I'll just use one of it just for completeness. So now we have a much better understanding of the root causes. We have potentially many root causes and we can start addressing them and, and solving and have one or more ideas that we can evaluate and understand how we can uh, uh, solve the actual problem uh, in, in, uh, sorry, so, so solve the actual problem that this entire project is about. Uh, and these ideas during the process of getting collected in Idea Manager, I just recorded one, but it could be many. There is an additional process that we uh, offering here to evaluate before we even implementing anything to evaluate which idea potentially has a bigger potential to be a solution or to get us closer to, this, to the solution. And at the end of the day, the purpose of the entire project, like any other project, is to come up with a solution, propose the solution that we go, you're going forward with. And in this case, just being, being conscious of time, uh, I'll just paste here what we have prepared. And that's the different, different things that we just talked about. Reduce the gas, gas pressure, fixate the wafer, uh, you know, so it doesn't actually move, hit the wafer from uh, top to bottom. So all of these ideas are great or redesign the centering pins, which we also talked about. So when it flies, it's fine that it flies, but it doesn't have a direct hit. It actually lands on it. This thing was implemented in the past and it worked. The, the number of bro broken wafers was reduced to absolute zero, uh, at least during this process. And I'll pause here for any question. Maybe you can show the report, which is uh, collects everything, which is uh, within yep. this project. Allow me ask a concrete yep. question, Eric. Can you hear me? Yeah. Excuse me, Shane? Can you hear me? OK. So yeah. the um, before you analyze the root cause, right, you drop a lot of information there. It's uh, the image here, broken wafer, and also mm -hmm. the, yeah, this one, yeah? You go down a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure this, um, so you look like you take all kind of information, right? We can't drop in the um, drop here, right? So if I got, for example, if sure. a former case study, I got some um, uh, images like this, I can drop in, right? Mm -hmm. So the process is very similar to any other process when you trying to solve a problem as a, as a team, for example, right? You get into the room, you have some sort of document somewhere. It could be Word document, it could be PowerPoint, it could be some uh, Google Docs, whatever the mechanism you're using, mm. or or many cases, email, right? You just drop this entire pile of information in the email and because you need to hold it somewhere, you need to somehow share what's going on, what happens. Like people do still trying to understand the problem space. And instead of having it all over the place, everyone uses some weird other mechanism that is not really shareable necessarily, or if it's shareable, it's not really organized. We, uh, we I don't wanna use <laughs> the word forcing, but we encouraging people to, to place everything in one place. So it's all within the context of the same problem. You don't have emails anymore. You don't have some, uh, you know, orphan documents lying around anymore. It's all in here, hmm. right? And, and that's the purpose of it. Wait, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Agulansky, I, I have a question. So for, for all the information that the AI is using, where all that data is coming from? Where is the database or the sources for, for the, all that information suggested? Right. 
So uh, uh, the first piece of information is bits and pieces that we're using from the project itself, of course, right? But the actual source of information, it's a publicly available information that you would, again, you would go and Google or library or any other source of knowledge and, and try to search for information. It's the same thing, right? So in, in this particular case, we're using uh, OpenAI as our mechanism. It could be any any other, it would be very similar. It depends on what data it's trained on, but it's a publicly available data. Thank you. Yeah. Now, uh, like Anatoly mentioned, one last beat in any project, uh, what people really, really hate doing, especially engineers, is writing reports or PowerPoints to, you know, for their managers. I definitely hate doing that. Uh, and they don't need to do it anymore. The report is here with all the description, with the entire background, everything that we just did in the project from end to end, including the tools that we used and what was the outcome of these tools. Here's the idea that we generated while using the five whys. Uh, the list of ideas, if we would have tasks and meetings and anything else that happened within the project, it's all in one place in one organized document. So the shareable, printable, it's uh, really up to, up to you what to do it. But ideally, uh, we don't want to just print or send file by email. We kind of going back to the same basis that we trying to run away from. Uh, is just organized in one place on the platform and can be looked at. Right. Well, it's maybe good uh, to show. Uh, yeah, knows. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Sure. Uh, so something that I wanted to make sure that everybody is aware of, the all the information about all of the tools and, and uh, let me go to the tools just to show an example. Uh, we have a link to help articles and we have, we're trying to cover as much as we can, uh, all the help, help articles out there uh, with a detailed explanation, how to use it, uh, what does it mean with all the images and examples. And if we go back to the knowledge base, there is quite a lot of information about everything that, that's available on the platform. And we're making sure to maintain that as up to date as possible as we expand. Uh, in addition to that, we have the blog articles and blog articles, extremely helpful. Uh, and if you look for root causes, root cause, oops, right? You'll find a bunch of different articles that talk exactly about root cause analysis of a different forms and shapes uh, using the platforms or just different concept, concepts. Uh, so there's a whole, I didn't even know, we have five pages of these, of these different articles that in one way or another touching root cause analysis, including last webinars and courses, right? And uh, the last thing I wanted to touch on that comes up every time is our pricing model, which is available inside the platform. Uh, we starting with a free, uh, there is a freemium we can, you know, it's enough for people to start using, to start understanding, start feeling the platform and how it works. Uh, then there is a personal pro, which is uh, built for consultants, people who work with uh, individuals who work for as consultants for other companies and so on. That's a, uh, that's all described here. And it's basically, so the free plan has a certain limitations to that. Uh, the personal pro is still for an individual use, but we basically removing all of these limitations, but it's still again for a single use, by the way, all the details are here. Uh, and then team plan that's built more for organizations, depends on the number of seats. Uh, it is, uh, that's the price for uh, per seat. That's built for teamwork inside the organization that has much more uh, 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 collaborative space 
functionality in that, uh, including some additional security measures as well. And then enterprise is very different beast as we need to, uh, many times we're getting requests a request very specific customizations or requests or security measures and so on. That's why it's virtually impossible to give any price there. And I will stop here for any questions. Yeah, and of course we are ready to help. Uh, contact us and we'll be happy to help you. Hey Alex, so I didn't pay attention. Did do you have a trends of evolution in the problem solver? No, uh, we didn't implement it yet. Uh, but you know, we we might in the future. At this point, we we didn't implement it yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, All right. I'll stop the recording at this point. Uh...